Jones. They, he's not really a junior. He's just Vince McMahon. He um, he was a uh, the, the TV announcer, and he, and he just helped his dad out. And uh, so his dad ran everything. I came in there. They they uh, put me over with a figure four leg lock. I was breaking guys' legs. Uh, they were carrying them out as fast as I could wrestle them. And they were building me up for Bob Backlund, who was the world champion at the time. And uh, the first time I ever wrestled, actually, that wasn't on television, my first main event in New York in the territory there was Madison Square Garden against Bob Backlund. There was a big snowstorm, but the place was still sold out. And I wrestled Bob, and we went one hour to the time limit, so it was a tie. It was a no contest. One hour with Bob Backlund, let me tell you, that wasn't easy because Bob Backlund was a great NCAA champion. He, uh, I never thought he was the greatest pro wrestler because he didn't really have all the razzmatazz in his showbiz, but he was a great man. He's a great wrestler, and I took my time with him, and I was one of the few wrestlers that could have a real quality match with Bob Backlund. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, now, as we move on here, in your great legendary career as a pro wrestler, uh, for those that are listening at home who that don't know much about you, how many uh, championships have you won total in your career? Well, I, you know, probably 30, 40. I don't know. I, I could sit down and, and count them out. But, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of them. I mean, after I left... Uh, uh, New York in 1981, I went back to the Carolinas and uh, uh, went back there and wrestled Walter McDaniel, broke his leg, and, um, you know, uh, became the United States champion down there. And then I went back to, back to New York again and did a big feud with Pedro Morales where I suplexed him on the CMF floor, went back, turned around and went back to the NWA in Charlotte again. And then I started that legendary feud with Roddy Piper, and that's where we finished off with a dog collar match on the very first pay-per-view, closed circuit ever in 1983. This is before the first WrestleMania or anything. It was Roddy Piper, dog collar match against Greg the Hammer Valentine for the U.S. belt. He beat me because that was his kind of match, but I still retained the title. Uh, eventually, though, we both left, uh, and we both ended up and winded up and started our career in uh, the late, late 19, or actually it was 84, yeah, 84, we came into uh, uh, New York. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, that dog collar match, wasn't that uh, from Starcade, like the first Starcade paper? Yeah, it's all the Vince, of course, brought up, bought up all the, uh, uh, the tapes and everything from the Mid Atlantic, and, uh, he's got it out on a DVD set right now, and, uh, it's a tremendous match. You ever get a chance to watch any of the people listening to the radio, if they ever get a chance to go out and pick up the greatest 15 stars of the 80s, I believe that's what it's called, and, and, yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's a phenomenal match I have in there with Tito, an Indian strap match, and also uh, that dog collar match, which which was, uh, you know, that was, uh, even before that was out on DVD, people would stop me in the airports and all over the place because I still do a lot of traveling, and they, they would always mention that match. So a pretty brutal match and pretty good match, a classic in your uh and your memory of great matches that you've had. Uh, now, now going back to your way before you started, we're kind of switching guns here, uh, way before you started being a pro wrestler, uh, when you first started, how brutal was the training? Uh, well, you know, I was a young kid, and uh, I was in good shape, and I had good genes because, after all, I was Johnny Valentine's son. But I... I I tested myself. I worked really, really hard with the weights, and I uh, not only weight training, but I did some boxing training where not actually boxing uh, an individual, but uh, working out on the bag because my dad wanted me to, to learn how to throw a punch real good. So I did a lot of that, and I uh, 
did running. I, you know, I hated to run because heavier guys, it's hard, harder on your knees and your ankles. So I, f I found out when I first time I went to Japan that uh, you didn't have to run. The, the same thing you could do is you could do free squats and just do these uh, like sumo squats and stuff. So I started doing that. Okay. Okay. And I already asked you that question. In your career, how many, like, uh, we already talked about the dog collar match being a favorite of yours. Uh, any other favorite matches? Uh, well, I had a lot of favorite matches. Uh, actually, um, one of those, one of my favorite matches, it's a great match for me to to watch and see is, is on that double DVD set, uh, the greatest matches of the 80s or superstars of the 80s with Tito, which was a lumberjack match. That was, that was one of my favorites, too. Okay, all-time favorites. Uh, let's see. Now, this is a, a, a recent event that I, I, I looked up and that I, kind of realized or remembered from last October. I remember seeing you on WWE Raw's uh, homecoming to the USA Network on October 3rd, 2005 in Dallas, Texas. Explain what it felt like to be back in a WWE ring with all your favorite or were with all your fellow legends like Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Jimmy Snuka, and much more. You know, that was all fine and dandy, but I wish they would have let me wrestle somebody, you know. Um, Standing around in a ring is one thing, and but I actually, you know, I, I would have been thrilled if they would have just brought me back and let me wrestle somebody. And how how would have that been able to, or how would have you been able to do that? Would you have been able to ask Vince if you could have done a match, or or how does that work? When he brought me back for the Hall of Fame, put me in the Hall of Fame, I said, well, let, let me have a match. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, but, but uh, his old ass can get out there at 60 years old and wrestle if he wants to. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I wanted to wrestle because that's that's what I am. I, you know, I'm a pretty good talker. I'm a, you know, whatever, you know, I can do other things besides wrestling. But wrestling is what I am, and that's what I'm about. And, uh, and standing out in the ring with my clothes on, waving at people, that's not Greg Valentine. I like to get out there and wrestle. Well, after after you were inducted to the Hall of Fame, and I'll ask you about that here a little bit. Uh, one question I had to ask was uh, after the uh, I noticed after the uh, homecoming, uh, Vince actually did let you wrestle a few matches on uh, a few Sunday Night Heat tapes. Yeah, and actually I was supposed to be on Raw, and uh, they ended up changing it at the last minute and put me on the Heat, which which uh, plays in Europe on television, but unfortunately it, it only plays on on the Internet over here. And uh, and I was supposed to be on Raw, so then they said they were going to bring me back for some other things, and I'm still waiting for that call. And I hope you get that call, because it will be nice to see you back at the WWE ring again. Uh, let's see. And now, of course, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, Here's a question that you've probably been asked a million times and explain what and how it felt to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame back on Saturday, March 30, March 13, 2004, a day prior to WrestleMania 20. Well, I've been calling Vince several times between, uh, oh, I don't know, over the 10 years that lapsed between 1994 when I, I did a Royal Rumble and I did something else. I did a couple matches. And... And uh, I didn't return to any WWE rings for quite a long time. I've I've been very successful independent-wise, though, and did a lot of a lot of good things independent and made a made a good living at it. But in when I got the call from Vince, I was in Phoenix at a uh, conference. Actually, it was a conference for uh, Christian athletes, and I'm, I was out there. And all of a sudden, I get a call, and it came in private. I said, I don't know if I should answer this or not, but I answered it, and it was Vincent Mann. And I said, oh, you're returning my call. Um, you know, I thought maybe he was returning my call because he wanted me to come up and wrestle because that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. But he says, no, we're going to do WrestleMania 20. We want to induct you into the Hall of Fame. And uh, that was a surprise. Um the only other time I had seen Vince was like four or five months before that at Road Warrior Hawk's funeral. 
in Tampa, Florida, and uh, right right close to where I live, and I was a good friends with Hawk, and I saw Vince there, and he was very, very friendly to me, and so I think maybe that connection, and the fact he wanted to start up the Hall of Fame because he really hadn't inducted anybody for a while, and uh, so that was that 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 made me feel really good, yeah. And it was uh, seeing well, this is actually before they allowed. Uh, they just recently started allowing uh, people on USA Network or Spike TV or let's just see the twenty uh, WrestleMania twenty one they had uh, on Spike TV the Hall of Fame last year and then this year they had on USA Network. Uh, they did have a, a disc out uh, on the Hall of Fame, uh, and you remember that. Uh, any uh, any matches?